uh, I respectfully disagree podcast NBA All Star Edition. NBA is in a rough spot. And I'm going to uh, share my thoughts as the NBA All Star game just ended. And just kind of recap the weekend. I said, uh, my wife surprised me with tickets to the uh, All Star practice uh, and media day. Like I said, it was a Christmas gift. This was my first time attending an NBA All Star event. Like I said, it's in Indianapolis. Nothing but a little two hour drive, straight shot. So I was excited, looking forward to going. It's been several weeks, you know what I'm saying, just getting amped up and excited and happy about it. And right on cue, my ass caught the flu. Literally, like, last Monday, woke up feeling terrible, go to immediate care, and boom, you got the flu. 105 temperature, body aches, no appetite. Good night. Thought you was in her sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess on the bright side, man, your boy done lost 12 pounds in, since Monday. I'm telling you, man, I ain't been able to eat, do nothing. But anyways, it was like, damn. Looking forward to NBA All-Star Weekend. And get sick. So now it's kind of like up in the air. Should I go? And, you know, luckily I started feeling a little bit better. So we, you know, gassed up, slid on up there. And originally I was kind of disappointed because it's been in the 60s all week. And then the day we get ready to go, they call for three to five inches of snow. And usually, you know what I'm saying, the weatherman is kind of wrong. They make their predictions or whatnot. But this time, they hit that shit on the head. So we got up there Friday. And, you know, we were looking forward to kind of, you know, walking around downtown, any kind of little pop-up shops and things like that. But as soon as we got there, it was already snowing. And it snowed literally the whole evening, clear up until the night. So we just kind of crashed in the room and watch the celebrity game and stuff in the hotel. So that's where I'm going to start. The celebrity game. Overall, it wasn't bad, but it didn't have the star power. You know what I'm saying? Like the NBA All-Star Weekend has been a big thing for my household in particular, because, you know, my wife and I, we both enjoy basketball and it's always around Valentine's Day and things like that. So we always trying to figure out how to incorporate All-Star Weekend into our festivities and let the kids, you know, enjoy it as well. And part of that has been Celebrity All-Star Game. But when you got a Celebrity All-Star Game and we're both sitting here and we're like, I have no idea who any of these people are. And, you know, now we're talking about YouTube creators and things like that. And it's like, I guess we're out of that age range of who these people cater to in a sense. So it's like, okay. And then overall, the game was competitive. I enjoyed it from that standpoint. Because you actually saw that it was some real, you know, athletes out there on the court. And they were really playing <laughs> outside of Micah Parsons. Like, you knew he was gunning. He was gunning and he wanted the MVP or whatever. But, you know, one of those things where it's like, as a fan of just basketball itself, you appreciated the game. But in terms of the title of the event being a celebrity all-star game, you didn't get that star power the the joking and things like that 
So you just kind of scratch your head. So then you go to the Rising Stars event. And I'm okay with the format that they have currently where it's like, you know, we'll play to, what, 40. And then the two teams that advance play for the championship or whatever. And it gives the opportunity for the G League players and things like that to showcase their talents or whatnot. And I think that was the biggest upset when the uh, players from the G League took down uh, Wimby and his squad or whatnot. So from that standpoint overall, Friday night wasn't too bad. So then, you know, Saturday, like I said, I always told my wife that I would rather see the – the open practice sessions because that's where all the main NBA stars are going to be at all in, in one location. So me as a basketball fan, I'm looking forward to the event. So we got there and surprisingly it was empty and it's like, okay, (laughs) does the weather have something to do with this? And I kept, you know, just saying to myself, I was like, maybe it's because it snowed last night. The roads were still icy. I don't think the city was prepared for what had happened because it was a lot of accidents. And like I said, we ended up taking an Uber, you know, instead of me driving downtown because of the, the road conditions. But overall, it was just empty. And I'm saying to myself, you know, the night before the events were at Lucas Oil, which is where the Colts play, and we were going to go to the celebrity game. But the tickets were, like, insane to get a good seat. And in my mind, I'm like, bro, they're, they're doing all of this where the Colts play. Like, I'm sure this arena holds 50,000 people. Why wouldn't you have the tickets reasonably priced so that anybody in their families can come out and just enjoy the moment, enjoy the evening? But I get it. It's a business. But I heard that, like, they asked a lot of people. Our Uber driver was like, you know, he went to the celebrity game and they had asked a lot of people to move down to fill a lot of the empty space. And sure enough, they did the same thing for the practice. You know, my wife had paid for uh, lower level seats. But when we got in there, you know, it was like a lot of open seats. And I guess for the camera views or the camera, you know, shot or whatever, they started asking a lot of people to move down. So the event was supposed to start at 11 But, you know, it was like 15 or 20 minutes late because they were asking people to fill in the seats. So even with that, it's like you're pricing out your loyal customers. You know, people can't afford to spend that type of money just to come to a venue for two hours like it's impossible. And then by the time you do concessions and things like that. But like I said, that's something that I was looking forward to because, you know, I got my son with me. My daughters was there. You know, they're starting to enjoy basketball more. So I'm saying to myself, everybody's going to be in one atmosphere. And this will allow us to soak it all in. So, boom, it starts. And one thing I can say Kudos to Steph Curry, bro. Like, I've seen Steph several times now. You know, I've gone to a couple, you know, Cavs, Warriors games and things like that. And I've always admired him for his pregame and what he does when he's out there on the court. When Steph Curry plays – He's going to give you everything that he has. He's not going to shortchange it. And when he came out there on the court, he was engaged with the crowd, interacting with the fans, saw him signing, you know, autographs and jerseys. 
Man, shout out to my son, bro. Man, my son was straight groupie mode. Hold on. <coughs> my son was in groupie mode all weekend, man. He was trying his best to get their attention and get autographs and things like that. And, uh, you know, he was able to get Isaiah Thomas, legendary Zeke, uh, got his autograph. So that, that counts for something. But he was trying his best to get down there to the court to get – you know, a lot of the all stars to sign his uh, stuff or whatnot. But I promise you, son, we we gonna make it happen, man. We gonna make it happen. But the whole entire time, I'm soaking it in because I'm watching how certain players are interacting with the crowd or just using this time to just be themselves and and have fun with it. So again, kudos to Steph Curry because. I've never once seen him shortchange the fan base. So they introduce all the players. And for me, being a diehard LeBron fan, I'm like, wait a minute, man. I know this dude didn't just do what I think he did. And sure enough, LeBron was not in the building. So... Deep down, I'm pissed off because I'm like, I get it. And everybody keeps giving this dude this pass. And I'll touch on it later once I get my thoughts on this all-star game. But it's like, come on, bro. Like, it's a lot of kids and stuff that won't get an opportunity to go see him play a game this may have been their only chance to see him. And it was a lot of LeBron jerseys in the crowd and stuff like that. And it's like, come on, man. It's a two-hour practice. You're not going to show up. Like, really? I don't want to hear the 20-year BS, man. Come on, bro. Like, that's the one thing that I've always admired and I've always talked about in terms of Jordan. I didn't like how once he retired – it's like you don't give nothing back to the game. Like you don't give any kind of access to where people can sit down and interview or see you commentate and things like that. Like you don't give anything back. And now I'm starting to view LeBron in a different light because it's like, come on, bro. Like either you in or you're not like, 20 years, 20 all-star appearances. At the end of the day, bro, just show up. Just show up. That's what this weekend is supposed to be about, man. Celebrating the game of basketball, having fun while you're doing it. Everybody's relaxed. Just show up, man. But for me, as a diehard basketball fan, it's like... I'm sitting there in the practices. That's my first time being able to see KD. Saw Dame up close. Um, saw Kawhi. You know what I'm saying? And I'm looking all, at all of them as they warm up and things like that. So I'm infatuated with their approach to the game. And I have a newfound respect for Dame because he's all business. And that's why I took him to win the three-point contest because of how his practice went. And I was pointing it out to my wife, and I was like, man, look, he's not missing. And he's just sitting there, like, just casually shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting. And I'm talking about just draining it. And then you looked around, and you saw Luca and Joker, and they're kind of, you know, nonchalant, laughing, trick shots and things like that. Shout out to Luca because man, he some of them shots he was making, bro. It just he made it look so easy. But it's like you saw certain ones who you saw that they were there for business. They're re, they're approaching the game with appreciation. I'll say that. Yes, it's a practice, but they're out there. This is work. This is business. Then you got, you know, Steph, uh, Trey Young was over there interacting with the crowd or whatnot. Um, 
But then you had some people that was just kind of like nonchalant, not really doing much. And I'm saying to myself, it's like my biggest gripe about that was it really wasn't a structure to it. So for the people that, you know, spent their hard earned money, like it was some people behind us that was complaining. It was like, man, this is boring. I should have just, you know, saved the money and went to the uh, slam dunk stuff, which was later on that evening. And, you know, I can understand why people may feel that way. So that's why I'm saying all of this, because it's like as a casual basketball fan, I enjoy myself. The kids enjoy themselves. So I'm cool. But as a person that may just be wanting to go for this particular experience, I can understand why some people will be frustrated or or let down. Because you pay all this money and it's just kind of like there's no structure. Everybody's just kind of half-assing it or whatnot. And, uh, you know, my wife ended up taking my son to the three-point contest and stuff because I, you know, I wasn't feeling well. And they enjoyed it. You know, my son had a good time. But sitting here watching it from TV, it's like, okay, three-point contest was dope. Skills challenge was dope. Steph versus Sabrina was dope. And then you get to the dunk contest. (laughs) (laughs) Yo. What are we supposed to do about the NBA dunk contest? Like, I keep hearing people, you know, reading comments and things. The dunk, dunk contest is over. It's dead. And then some people was like, no, it's the wrong people competing and this. And that. everybody's trying to come up with a solution on how to fix the NBA dunk contest. And I'm going to push the button because I don't think it's dead per se. But I, disagree. I will say that they have to figure out a new recipe because now the people are spoiled. Like. Honestly, I don't think it's it's too much more people can do with the dunk contest in terms of we've seen everything. The human body can only do so much, bro. Like the law of gravity is is real. Like once you go up, bro, like nobody's going to hang there forever. And We've seen between the legs. We've seen 360s. We've seen windmills. We've seen free throw line. We've seen jump over one person, jump over two. Let's jump over Shaq. So it's like, I think at this point, we're just spoiled because we've seen everything. So now the bar is so high to where anything that's just basic, which is what Jalen Brown gave us, it's like, man, you could have kept this. And Jalen Brown, bro, I don't even know if you get an A for effort. Like, that was some of the most basic packages. And, like, I don't know what you was going for, bro. You try to use nostalgia, Dominique Wilkins, D. Brown, But it was like there was no enthusiasm in it at all. And it was just basic dunks. And then the judges was horrible. And it's just like, okay, this is bad for the for the business side of the league. And I'm just like, bro, where do we go from here? So you fast forward, I'm gonna try to keep this under 30 minutes. It's just me giving my my raw thoughts following this All-Star game. But it's like, in terms of a dunk contest, I keep seeing people like, oh, they should bring the people from YouTube and this. And then I was like, that's part of the problem, in my opinion. Like, these are people that dunk for a living. Like, they wake up every day trying to complete a dunk that no person has ever seen before. And that's all they do. You cannot ask 
a person that plays basketball for a career to try to put his body in harm's way to try to entertain a crowd. Like, it's crazy. Like, I've seen people catch a ball, turn, dunk it backwards, not even looking, and this and this. Like, bro, like, the human body can only do so much. So you're asking people to, to go above and beyond natural human abilities to put on a show. And it's like, no. Nah. Here's what I would suggest, in my opinion, give the dunk contest um, create categories. And it's like the first round, who's the best dunker off of one foot? Who's the best two foot dunker? Um, based on vertical leaps, who has the highest vertical and can complete this and that, like give them things that they have to achieve in order to score the points to where that way you're earning merits as you compete. And now it's kind of like, okay, that may be the incentive to prove like, okay, I'm the, not only am I the best dunker, but I have the highest vertical and I can do X amount of things, or I'm a better one leg jumper, or I can do this off a of two and blah, blah, blah. Like that's just a suggestion in terms of how to make it competitive as well as, you know, some somewhat of having a degree of difficulty. I don't know. On top of the fact that it lacks star power. And I know, you know, as a league, you can't force people to do things. But I think that's the difference between back in the day compared to now. It's like your Jordans, your Dominiques, like the stars were the main attraction. So regardless of what dunks they done, the crowd was going to go crazy because, hey, this is Clyde Drexler. This is Michael Jordan. This is Dominique Wilkins. You didn't have a bunch of random name people who don't have a following. So the crowd is just kind of like, who is this person? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, no, it lacks star power. So y'all let me know in the comments, man, how y'all felt about that dunk contest and that bullshit Jalen Brown pulled last night. Because to me, man, he, he set the league back. Like, that was ugly. But then you fast forward to tonight, and I'm I'm done after this. Because to me, I feel like the NBA All-Star game has reached – the lowest of the low. You had a good thing rolling with the uh, team captains and, you know, LeBron and Giannis, or one year it was Kevin Durant. You know, they were live picking their teams, kind of like a draft, going back and forth. Then they implemented the uh, the Kobe thing where, you know, you had a set score to reach. So the game was competitive, you know, it gave you something different to watch. And then this year they go back to the East versus West. And if you looked at those two rosters on paper, you just knew the West was going to slaughter the East. Just off of star power alone, you just knew it wasn't even going to be anywhere near competitive because you got LeBron, Durant, Luka, Joker, Curry, Davis all on one side and then you look on the other side and you got a lot of new faces with Maxi Brunson Halliburton is the second year player um Barnes Bam uh Trey Young you know what I'm saying like just off of names alone you just knew the West was going to destroy the East and right out the gate you you knew the direction that the game was going in because of how it started out. And it's like, you know, I'm telling my wife, like, okay, just start the game out, get your blood flowing, you know, give a give up a couple of layups here, dunks there, whatever. But then as the game goes on, lock in, like go compete. And it never happened. 
And again, based on those ticket prices that I saw when I tried to look them up, these are thousands of dollars to sit in that arena and watch this game, bro. I would be highly upset if I paid that type of money, bro. And it's bad for the league. It's bad for the league, bro. And then you add the gambling effect to it, you know, people creating parlays and things like that. I lost money tonight. And I simply made a ticket where LeBron scored 15, Steph scored 15, Tatum, and Damian Lillard. I took a prop bet for that, bro. And LeBron plays two quarters and never comes back out. It's like, come on, man. That's a slap in the face of all the fans, bro. Damn 20 years and all of that, man. Like, give the spot to somebody who's going to actually make use of it then. And that's my biggest gripe, bro. And it's like, I promise you, I'm a LeBron fan. I'm not a LeBron hater, but I'm really starting to look at dude differently, man. It's like, okay, we supposed to celebrate you when you, you know, mark all these milestones and year 21 and this and that. But then when you don't want to play defense or you don't feel like playing back to back or you don't want to play the last game Heading into the all-star break, you're just going to dip. And we're just supposed to, oh, well, it's year 21. He's entitled to do that. Like, come on, bro, man. It's too many people paying hard-earned money, bro. Damn that. You skipped out the whole weekend and you show up on the day of the game and then all you give people is two quarters, bro. You could have stayed somewhere else for that, man. People are paying money to see this. That's not cool, bro. And no defense is played at all the entire game. Zero. None. And it's like at this point, bro, it's just a it's just a scrimmage. It's not even a game, man. It's a scrimmage. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing with this? And you could tell out the game, boy, Dane wanted that MVP, man. Shout out to Dane. But it's like, had anybody had the stones to go out there and guard him, then he doesn't go off like that. But it's like nobody's willing to guard anybody. NBA's down bad, man. Where do they go from here in terms of how do you market a product that people already complain that they don't like because of the lack of defense and things like that? But... One of your biggest marketing events, you know what I'm saying? How can you market it to the world when people are being turned off by it? So that brings me to another point in terms of like, you know, you keep hearing people say, oh, the league is in great hands once Duran and LeBron and Curry and all them walk away. And I'm going to hit the button again. I disagree. Because y'all just heard me give praise to Luca because of, you know, the shots and stuff that he was making in the practice yesterday. But it's like when you look at Luca and Joker, they don't fit in those type of environments in terms of an all-star game because it's too up and down, back and forth. And obviously they don't have any desire or any interest to play that style of basketball because it doesn't fit their brand, so to speak. Like, they're not flashy. They're not going to get up and down. So it's like, are they really going to be the face of the league in terms of star power, marketable? And it's like, Cat had a strong second half. He, you know, put on a show. But, again, it's they're wide open dunks and layups and threes. So you really don't, you know, the numbers are skewed. So when you're sitting there looking at it, it's like, who's really going to be the face of the league? Who can you really use to market and sell to the rest of the world in terms of star power, bro? And it's like the NBA had a good opportunity tonight to make it fun and competitive. We're going back to the East versus West. Let's just put on a good show for the fans. And then you lay an egg like that, bro. Nobody's trying. You got the super superstars chilling on the sidelines. 
And I don't know. I don't know, but I can't wait to hear Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bayless, and all of them tomorrow because it's like, to me, that that was the ultimate slap in the face to the NBA fans as well as your paying customers because people are investing a lot of money into that, and it's like at least make them leave and feel appreciated or feel like they got these got their money's worth. You know, I remember growing up and it's like the all-star game ended. You couldn't wait to go to school the next day to talk about all the stuff that happened. You know, I remember when Iverson threw the self lob, he threw it up under his arm and caught it and hit the reverse. And it's like, you couldn't wait to go back to school the next day to talk about that. Where now it's like my kids ended up going to bed. There's nothing exciting. Just a bunch of three-pointers. No competitive nothing. Just step across half court and launch. Run to the corners and launch. Failed alley-oop attempts. When Luka got hung, it's just like, okay, like, it's crazy, bro. But we right at 30 minutes, man. Y'all let us know. In the comment section, bro, how do y'all feel about the NBA All-Star Weekend? Like, should they just do away with it to send home a message to the players? And it's like, if y'all are not going to show more respect and give back to the fans and give back to the pioneers of the game, then we'll just shut this shit down. And maybe when some of these players lose some of these endorsement deals and things like that. Cause you got to think, bro, a lot of these star players are selling sneakers during this weekend, merchandise jerseys. And it's like, if we cut all this shit off and shortchange you in terms of some of your, uh, advertisements and market of uh, market abilities and things like that, I may have just made that word up marketable. You know, if you cut back on how marketable these players are is what I'm trying to say. But it's like, you know, will you will you approach the game and take it more seriously or what? Like, that's 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 disappointing, man. And plus, the game is on till damn near midnight. So imagine how we stayed in Indianapolis and then, you know, like, nah, bro, y'all doing too much, man. I would I would hate that. I would hate that. And even with that, it's like you didn't see a lot of stars sitting courtside and stuff like that. And it's like, come on, man. It's it's bad for business. It's bad for the sport. And overall, I think that's just where we're at now, man. Like basketball is just, I don't want to say it's dying, but it's like, bro, like, you don't have that same feeling no more, man. Like, there ain't no love for the game. It really ain't. But I would love to hear y'all thoughts, man. Y'all let us know in the comments. Um, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Where should the NBA go from here, man? Because I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot of backlash in terms of the performance that we saw tonight or lack thereof or lack. Man, look, I'm it's late at night. I can't even talk. Or lack thereof. Y'all let me know, man. We out. Toasted, yeah. no competition. I'm Nisha Toasted. Yeah. I feel so high. I feel